song danced in stories. In this way, this is how they passed on wisdom from one generation to the next. So the show that we're doing right now is a G-Jack on Turtle Island. Um, it is about two whooping cranes, uh, a family of whooping cranes. It's about a little whooping crane, that little the chick. Um, it's about her first migration south and uh, the people, the indigenous people she meets on the flyway and animals. So she, she travels south and meets, um, meets animals and people, and she learns stories, and dances, and traditions, and all the things that make her resilient to be able to travel. Cranes are incredibly beautiful animal. They're like megafauna. They are very big and beautiful. And um, no matter where, um, wherever the communities have lived, with people who've lived with cranes for thousands of years, sustainably, there is often stories of um, song and dance and stories that are in the. Cultures. I started learning in other cultures how much other cultures honor and respect cranes because of the interconnectedness of what they have. There's a valley in Bhutan that there's a long history there of there's a monastery there, there's a temple there where people, there actually is a crane dance because people would celebrate when it was time to migrate from lowlands to highlands because when the cranes arrived from Lhasa, they land. They would, they would fly from the north down to the south to Bhutan, and that's when the people would know to migrate further south. So there was always a a connection when the cranes would either arrive and the people would leave, and then when the people arrived, then that's when the cranes would leave. So there was a connection in the human seasonal movement and the crane seasonal movement. So there is actually a crane dance there. I was still interested in uh, connecting to nature in in the building process and connecting the animal to the environment. So these buffalo are supposed to look like the grasslands. And then we have a deer that's supposed to look like the birch bark forest that it's in. Because also these environments are very, the birch bark forest scene was the scene that Thai was, it's supposed to be the Anishinaabe scene. And so in Anishinaabe culture, um, the birch bark, here we go. The birch bark means so much to that community and you, you know, that you use that birch bark for everything, for, for housing, for boats, and that's knowledge. It's a really beautiful knowledge on how to peel the birch off of the tree and still let the tree thrive and, and live. And today, not everyone knows that, and you see people going into the forest and they peel off too much bark and they hurt the tree, but there's a knowledge there on how to live sustainably with the forest and where the forest provides life for the people and that exchange. So I wanted to have the forest, like, burst forth with life that would take care of you and you could take care of it and that exchange and that interconnection. So that's kind of where these puppets are coming from. So Turtle Island is um, the, yeah, for Iroquois, Anishinaabe, and some many other, not all of the, not all of the nations refer to North America as Turtle Island, but some do. There's a lot of stuff behind the, the turtle. If you guys didn't know, there's 13 plates on a turtle's back and there's 13 moons in a year. Um, so it's been a calendar for a while, and in the show you'll see things about our moons, the, the traditional moons. Fly. 